Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to a Pro Cycling Manager 2022 tutorial on the new scouting system. Now, this is one that's been requested since day one, but I haven't been prepared to put it out because there was too many variables that were still unknown. At this time, I'm down to one variable that is unknown, and I do not have an answer, and nor does the community, but there is at least speculation and we'll have to go off of that i'll highlight what that point is when we get to it so that you are aware that it is still a bit of speculation on that piece but the rest of it is now known quantities and we are set to go uh, likewise there is one piece of this that has been up for debate i will give you my viewpoint on that piece and as it was previously one of the unknowns i'll go over why i believe one method is better than another. But let's go ahead and get to the scouting tutorial here for the new system in Pro Cycling Manager 2022. First up, you can only have four scouts. It behooves you with only four scouts to have the best scouts that you can possibly have. Now, if you're playing with the world database, there is a limitation on the number of scouts in the world database, so you can't actually get to the proper number. Now, I have not played with the game base database, and it it's possible that that stock database may have this same issue. And that issue is that you can't quite get to a maximum. You can't get to four legendary scouts. Scouts come in four levels. They begin at regional as the lowest, and then you have national, international, and then finally legendary. As Ineos, they start with a couple of legendary scouts, and there's one legendary scout available in the pool of available scouts. So replacing one international scout with a legendary, that leaves us with this combination, three legendary and a fourth one being an international. The important part about having the best scouts available is it increases the capable workload. That is the key difference. The main difference between each level of scout is how much available workload do they have. Legendary scouts give you a max workload of 10. International gives eight. Now on the beginning of the year, you must set what your priorities are and they lock in for the entirety of the season. So it's really important that you set this up properly as you cannot change it throughout the course of the year. Likewise, year after year after year, it doesn't happen on a large scale, but on a small scale, each scout is going to develop a little bit more knowledge of a region than what they begin with. So if they begin with a level one knowledge in a region, they are going to see that increase by a couple of points. And if you keep that same scouted zone, then they would be at a three for a long time, which means they're gonna be more effective. The higher the knowledge, the more effective they're going to be. And so of course you wanna maximize that. And again, that is a second area where the better the scout, the more knowledge they're gonna have in terrain and the better they're gonna be at it. You can see that this French scout in the Belgium Luxembourg area, the Belux, they are an expert with a level four. Level five is pro. I don't think it goes beyond five actually. And so what you're going to try to get is if you have them covering these known zones after a couple of seasons, Italy is going to be a five as well. And they're gonna have fives in all of these areas, meaning they're gonna have maximum bonuses. Now the bonuses overall go up to 10. There are other things that provide bonuses besides the scout. So when assigning your scouts, the first thing that I recommend to you is of course, get the best scouts that you can possibly get. I think I've reiterated that point enough now, but if you can, if you have the option, you want to diversify the regions from which your scouts are from. That being said, Ineos had four scouts when we started, right? Two legendary and two international. One of the international scouts was Spanish. The legendary and the other international scout already assigned were also Spanish. So I had three Spanish scouts out of the four slots. If I had picked up another scout from the same nation, you have overlap. You don't get overlap. You assign one scout per region. Therefore, you want to try to avoid overlap. Try to make sure that they are from four different regions so that you can diversify what bonuses they apply to your team. 
that being the first point, the second step here is to then apply where you have those bonuses. Apply them in the best places possible. So you can see that our French scout has actually already used up all 10 of his points, getting four regions that he has knowledge in. The Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark, Slovenia for this particular scout who is available apparently when you start the game if you're using that world database. Therefore, a really good signing target for anybody. And you can see what four regions they can immediately spend their 10 points on. I do recommend spending all of their points. We'll go into detail why later on in the video. But for now, let me I, I will let you know that that is that debatable point that others have a different opinion than me on this one on. I'll explain why later you want to assign all of their points and not just some. In France, I have a one of my other scouts that also happens to be very good at just one level below, and he doesn't have all those maximum points used up. And none of the other regions that that French scout is effective in, there's no overlap anywhere else for him. So for us to get the most out of the group, we went ahead and assigned the Spanish scout to the French region. What you're ultimately getting here is you're getting bonuses in levels that is going to increase the knowledge of the territory. You can see here, knowledge of the territory in the UK is a 10, which is maximum. It is from zero to 10. The higher it is, the more effective the scout will be in detecting talent. Now, the reason why it is so high is, well, first off, we have a plus five from our Polish scout, but then there's other things up here. And all you have to do is hover over them and they will explain what they are. They will show up from time to time in region. In this case, Team HQ. It's Ineos. They're based in the UK. It adds a big bonus to knowledge of that particular territory. Next, five points bonus in knowledge, which means we don't even really need our Polish guy to be here and we could still have a 10. Yates and Pidcock are both members of the team and they are excellent riders providing a territory bonus. So the riders you have on the team do provide bonuses. You can also see here is an, another additional points in the territory thanks to this wide array of riders from the region. That is something that will change year after year as your team evolves and rider pool changes. Uh, but that is one of those key factors. So you can see what we have right now is bonuses to every region. They're not all level 10. You're not gonna see level 10s across the board. But of course, after a number of years, you're gonna develop some expertise, you're gonna get some additional bonuses, and your scores could actually get better after a number of seasons. But you can see right now we have a 10, 4, 10, 6, 5, 7, 4, 3, 7, and so on. So that that next step was to assign the areas where you're gonna have those bonuses. There are nine regions with a training structure of three or below. Those nine regions, as a couple of them do have high popularity, those nine regions amount to 11 total work out of that 55. Those nine regions are the easiest ones to stay away from. The quality of rider is not going to be good in those nine regions. Here's a list of those nine regions. Asia, all five. Not one of them has a training structure higher than two. You have a two, four, you have a two, eight, meaning there's gonna be a lot of cyclists, but you're not gonna find a lot of quality in those cyclists. So you could actually avoid Asia entirely and not miss a beat. There are four regions spread across the Americas. Two of them are good, two of them are not. The ones that are good, North America has a 7.6, nowhere near the highest, but it's respectable. And Colombia, where cycling has really, really taken off over the last little over a decade, is on the better side as a 5.8. Some of you may opt as this is kind of a bubble one, not a very high training structure, but high popularity, but it also uses to work, necessarily the best combination that you're gonna see out there. But the other two regions are much lower, 2.7 in South America. Plenty of riders, but not much quality, and it costs to work. And then Central America is a 3-3. Three, three. On the bubble in Africa as a 5-5 five, five nation is North Africa, but it, it does only cost one work. It's definitely one of those that many of you will uh, leave out as it's on the bubble and you'll need to sacrifice a few more points. But South 
Africa is a bit worse off as a 3-4. Oceania is actually excellent as it's a 9-8. It's one of the best regions, so you're fine there. Europe is mostly good, but not entirely. There's definitely a bubble. There is some regions that don't fit in perfectly. First off, the one that is in that list of nine is the Balkans. It's a 2-4. But also on the bubble is the Baltic states. It is literally the next lowest. It's the 10th lowest overall as a 5-4. So unless you happen to have, say, an, an Estonian scout or you have a big time Estonian rider on your team and you want that bonus and you want to develop it, probably stay away from the Baltic states as well. The bubble is your training structures with five. Uh, depending on how many scout points you do have available, skipping past most of the level five training structures. If you have any points remaining, you know, you could fill in one or two, but otherwise fill in anything with a higher training structure than five to start out with and see what you have left. Thing you will see that is new this year is the evolution of potential, good and bad both of young riders and of the young riders within your senior team. So evolution of potential here, we have Hajduk who is uh, on the Ineos squad. He was a three star talent, now is a three and a half star potential talent. Just over a week into the season, you're going to get a request to confirm your scouts missions. That's just gonna tell you that uh, you have already finished assigning those points, which we just did. So once you finished assigning those points and once you have confirmed your scouts missions, things are going to get going for the year and you're going to get updates every two weeks on targets. So it's something that once you've got this started, you can sit back and kind of enjoy, but there is one more element to the scouting portion of your season that you certainly want to be active with occasionally from time to time throughout the year. And here it is. So we've only progressed two days, so we are just starting to get the very first reports coming in from our scouts. Right now they don't know much. They have a level of detection. So we're gonna start with what is a level of detection because this is one of the biggest keys to what the scouts do. Beginning at level one, we have name, nationality, age, and their specialty and no additional information. Beginning at level two, we get one third of their attributes, current attributes revealed. You can see here that uh, Irish rider Ben Cahill is a 62 mountain and has a prologue sprint and stamina of those levels. Level two doesn't give you much. Doesn't give you much to go off of at all. Neither does level one for that matter. Naturally, your scouts are going to continue to get more and more information on these riders as the season goes on. But one of the ways that you can help that process along is by initiating your scouts to focus in on specific riders, which is going to help that detection. Now that process takes a while and in the meantime, natural detection is going to continue to occur. We are pushing levels along the way. What I would recommend is don't bother scouting 16 year olds at all through this process. Focus mostly on 18 year olds. If you don't have that as an option, add in some 17 year olds. So for example, right now our level two detection, we want to know more about them than the others. And so we're going to assign them. We'll get an updated progression of their detection automatically in a couple of weeks. Shifting over to another save, it's a lot easier to see the progression of attributes without having to play through a season to make that happen. So now looking at level three detection, you have your evaluation out of six possible stars. So the only additional piece here is what is their current rating? Level four brings in another third of their attributes, their current attributes. So now two thirds will be revealed. For me, the very first detection level that matters at all. None of the first four levels matter whatsoever. But beginning at level five, you have an approximate 
potential. So that's why we have this soft blue color here with level five. This is their approximate potential. But one thing I can tell you about the approximate potential, Nicholas Offner is not going to be better than Manuel Mueller. Mueller is going to be a better rider than Offner. They're not gonna be so far off that they are gonna flip who's the better rider. Mueller is going to be the better rider of the pair. So this is going to really allow you to start focusing in on using those observations to track higher potential riders over lower potential riders that ultimately can be ignored. Level six of detect detection brings in the remainder of the attributes, so that final third, to where you now have all of the current attributes revealed of the rider. Level seven locks in accurate potential, so now we know with certainty that the potential of this rider is three and a half stars. Looking at the player card, this is what we see. So this is that level seven detection uh, rider where we see all of their attributes revealed. We see what their current uh, spider web of those attributes is. We can see what that current potential is and we can see what their locked in potential is long term. But you can see the breakdown of uh, specialties Nothing has been revealed from there as of yet. Levels 8, 9, and 10 will reveal the potential across all the various specialties. Starting with this, level 8, which gives you a few of them. You're going to get a couple more on level 9, and you're going to get the last couple on level 10. So levels 8, 9, and 10 don't provide a lot. The key for me is levels 5 and level 7. You're getting the approximate potential and then you're locking that potential in, knowing just how good a rider is going to be. Whether they're amazing, whether they're gonna become a six star talent or not, isn't a big deal. Now, by the way, this for levels, uh, level eight is a proc. Beginning at level nine, it will lock in half of these. And at level 10, it'll lock in the other half. There is that distinction, it is additional knowledge. I have weak scouts uh, in this series as we it's a couple regional and a couple national scouts is all that we have. There aren't better scouts actually available as I did this day one and scouts weren't yet implemented into the, uh, the world database at that point. But what we have here is a situation where, you know, the knowledge just gets better and better level by level. So every level of detection is obviously good for you, but the key is how good are they going to be? So getting to level seven of detection is the biggest step that you could get in that list of riders. We wanna fill out everything else that we can possibly do. And here's the long and short of it. There are 55 work points spread out throughout the world. So there is a total of 55 points out there. Four legendary scouts, which we could only manage to get three, but let's say you got all four. If you have four legendary scouts, you have a workload capacity of 40. So you will never cover every territory of the earth. There is at least 15 points that will be left alone. What would you choose to leave alone? Well, there's actually, if you're looking for the best of the best, if you want to have the best. If you don't care about what regions they're coming from, if you want to scout the best absolute maximum, well, here's that recommendation. We have to abandon 15 points. So how do you decide where to abandon 15 points? Well, first off, bonuses from scouts are a good thing because you're going to scout more, uh, more effectively. That's obviously a good thing. But there is another very, very key detail about the database and about what it is they're going to scout, as in the young talent that they're getting after, that they're searching. And that is two key metrics that also exist on this page. So as we're looking at Austria right now, their training structure in Austria, or all the regions listed here, which is just Austria for this particular one. I'll show you a different example in a second. But the training structure in Austria is a five out of 10. The higher this value, the more juniors trained in this country may prove to be competitive. That is higher talent. So the training structure has to do with higher talent. The second one, popularity of cycling, rated from one to 10 as well. The higher this value, the more juniors there are to be detected in the country. Therefore, the whole point, the whole purpose 
of scouting is not to see thousands and thousands of names. The whole point of scouting is to find the best talent because you want the best talent on your team. You want the best prospects on your team. Therefore, the next key metric on how you distribute your available workload of your scouts is the higher the training structure, the better it is to apply. Now, of course, there's higher work rates, higher workloads out there, but the higher the training structure, the better. Popularity of cycling is kind of like a tiebreaker. More riders. If you detect 10 riders versus three riders, there's a better chance that one of those 10 is good. But honestly, the training structure has more to do with that, right? as we've already seen, than the popularity. It's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. And the quality is gonna come out of training structure first. Popularity of cycling is just a, a decent tiebreaker in that regards. So when you do eventually get to the draft, which happens at the end of October, just after the season ends a couple weeks later, you're going to be picking the number of riders that you have for your U23 team. You have to have a development team in order for that to even be a thing. On this current season, I had 10 riders. But as you're looking at this list of available riders and I'm trying to decide who it is that I want to sign, you can see that every last rider on that list is 18 and older. You cannot sign those 16 and 17 year olds that you've been scouting throughout the season. So my recommendation to you is to ultimately ignore them, only focus on scouting the older riders. Now, some 17 year olds will turn 18 over the course of the season and therefore be eligible. So do keep an eye out for that. But the 16 year olds will not absolutely be eligible. Some of them won't even exist in the database by time they come around to turning 18 as many of those youth Riders are, are not going to eventually turn pro, so that list gets shorter and shorter over time. From your U23 squad, you do not have any sort of additional bonus or access to the rider. You are going to get what you get, and everybody has access to the same set of riders. So any guys that we have signed on very well could go to another team. Therefore, you gotta keep an eye on them from the U23 squad. You've gotta look at other U23 squads to see which of those have the highest potential and are worth signing. And anybody who doesn't end up on these U23 squad could be free agents come the next year and would have been free agents entering this year anyway uh, through that scouting. So scout 18 plus, maybe 17 plus, uh, just having them on your U23 squad doesn't necessarily mean anything as they are free agents to anybody. You can steal others and they can steal yours, but at least in-house, you know exactly what's going on with them. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to have happen. Using my primary career mode save as an example, this is what happens when you save work and you increase effectiveness. So I have my four scouts here, uh, low level. We have a couple regional, a couple national scouts. That part is not really relevant. What is relevant is that one of the four has saved some work to get a double bonus to effectiveness. What that means is they have more reports. So you can see that evidenced here that there is 88 reports from that particular scout. Everybody else has between 47 and 56. Yes, the number varies scout to scout, but it is quite clear with virtually double or at least an extra 50% on top, we have more reports from that scout. But as we look at the scouting reports, if we determine what we have in detection, well, uh, let's start with the nationality. That scout, it's Austrian and Slovenian, and, and you can see, and if you take the time, there are 88 individuals. So that is individuals that have been uncovered. But if we look at level of detection, this is where things become noteworthy become important. We look at the level of detection. We have a couple level eights, level six, some level sixes. A little bit of this has been done through observation being a key, but you know, as you can see, at least at the moment, my list has fairly exhausted itself. I've gotten through what is there. Level five and beyond doesn't even cover one page. I mean, we're talking about 20-ish writers that have made it to a level five detection and beyond. Now there's a few Slovenians, there's what, four Austrians, that's seven out of 20 to 25. That's still a quarter. That's still one fourth of your list, roughly. So increased detection, does uh, increased reports on quantity of writers does not increase the quality of the reports. When you are scouting, 
the two key things are going to be the quality of the reports because without knowing how good they are now and how good they will become eventually, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing to you. All of these ones and twos down here, they don't have any value. Look at all those Slovenians. That is a long list of Slovenians at a level one or two. Same with the Austrians. And you can see how this list is longer than the other nation. So we might be finding more total reports, but we're not getting them at higher levels. I mean, look at all these level two Slovenian writers. These reports are completely useless to us right now. In order to, to have any value with the increased number, it's gonna come down to getting them to a higher detection level so that we know enough about them on whether we would want to sign them or not. More names is just simply more name. Quantity does not equal quality in this case. Cutting down is not gonna help. What you need is you need to get to the quality of reports to get that higher detection. And then, of course, the most important thing of all is to then find the highest potential writers. And you're only going to do that with the quality of report. Therefore, I do not recommend saving work. Use it. Get the most out of each individual writer. Find the ones that are going to be good. That's the trickier part. Get the quality reports and get the quality writers. And you will find pretty quickly as you go along who you want to make your observations on. Miroslav, not somebody I would target. He's a one and a half, three at level five. You don't need to do further observation. He's not going to be good. Often Nicholas is not going to be good. He's a two, two. Even if we progress him to level seven and beyond, that soft potential, what's it going to possibly be? A little up, a little down, maybe spot on. So maybe it turns out he's only a one and a half potential. Maybe it turns out he's a two and a half potential. And maybe it turns out we were accurate all along and he is just a two star potential. It's not gonna do us any good. You don't need to focus on that type of writer. What you do need to focus on is here's a couple four star potential guys. You need to get observations going on them. They are the ones that at the end of the year, you may wanna add to your U23 squad. So we absolutely wanna get them up to a level seven and beyond so that we can at least lock in what that potential is. In regards of what to do with the draft, my recommendation is beginning with the highest potential riders, in particular, the highest potential riders that you have the level seven detection or better, because then you actually know for sure. But if you have a level six potential who only has a five or six detection, you know that they're gonna be pretty dang good. You don't know if they're gonna be for sure a six star, but you know they're gonna be pretty good. So I would definitely recommend drafting a rider such as that because this list gets huge and you're not gonna get level 10 detection across the board. Now, I haven't played with better scouts, so I don't know how much better that does get. And maybe that knowledge does get a bit higher with better scouting, but maybe not. The key thing is to find the best potential, not necessarily what they're current because you can store them away on your U23s that next year where you're gonna know more about them. They're gonna develop a bit that year and then you get them signed to your you know, team that following season before somebody else snatches them up. But you get an extra year to kind of sit on that and see where they're at and, and see if they're good enough for your team or not. But that is ultimately how that scouting system works. Now, I did mention that there was still one thing very much up for debate. Um, the second thing that is still a big unknown is what happens to those 16 year old riders because you can't sign them. You can only sign riders that are 18 and older. Now there are some 17 year olds that end up being on that list. Why? Because they will be 18 in time for the upcoming year. They just hadn't had their birthday yet. So they make the list, they become draftable. And that's why some 17 year olds are okay. If they're 18 already, then you know for sure. So that's why I definitely scout the 18 year olds. 17 year olds, you might have to check the birthday. See where they are. Do we even see when their birthday is? Yes. So birthday is known. This is somebody who's going to turn 18 before the end of the year. So it's okay to scout most of the 17 year olds. In fact, if you're starting at the very beginning of the year on that, you'll know right away. But as the year goes on, as you detect more riders, you know, it's possible that you've got somebody who turned 17 somewhere earlier during that particular calendar year. So you got to watch carefully for those. 
What about the 16 year olds? Well, this is where that unknown is. What happens to them? The way this game is designed in the database, not all of those 16 year olds will be in the database come next season. Some, many, are going to go away. Some of those 17 year olds are going to go away. Many of those 18 year olds that don't get signed by anybody, many of them are going to go away. In fact, a lot of the youth talent that's here, a majority of them will never get a professional contract and therefore be gone, be excluded from the database in a couple of years. So it's really tricky to have 16 year olds that are wonderful talents in here because there's a very, very good chance that they will not be in the database by the next season. If you do happen to find a 16 year old and you get to level seven of detection and they're locked in as a, a six star, write their name down and maybe you'll still see them in the database the next year when they're already 17, knowing that they'll be 18 for that coming season and eligible and you know maybe you can get them signed, right? If they turn 17 at some point during the year or maybe they're gone, but remember them, right? Because you already knew that it was a six star talent. So jot the name down, but otherwise, you can forget about them because there's a very good chance that they're not going to be around by time you you can actually bring them in. And of course, August 1st, riders that are already 18 are eligible to be signed. So keep an eye out and you can get them signed immediately to the senior squad if they are that perfect talent. You don't have to wait and hope that somebody else doesn't sign them and then draft them. There's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of different things that can take place. But a recap of the main points. Get the best scouts you can get. Diversify where those scouts are from. Apply your scouts to the regions where you're going to get the biggest bonuses. Assign all of them because the bonuses don't mean anything. Quantity does not give you quality. You need quality. And quality is going to come through putting more work in. Not from having a, a larger list of names out there. If you don't have them to level seven detection, they mean nothing to you. So detecting more names does not help. Quality over quantity. Fill out all the best training regions. Ignore the lowest training level regions as you cannot use all of the points that are available. Even if you have four legendary scouts, you will still have 15 vacant points. So leave out those nine regions in particular. Leave out those five and belows and then whatever's on your bubble, fill in if you can to, to get a little bit more. Over the course of the year, use observation to get additional detection levels out of key riders. Focus on 18 year olds with that, sometimes on 17 year olds, and try to push that detection up to the level you need it to be, level seven, but especially level five. Reason why level five matters is because you're gonna get an idea. You're gonna realize right off the bat that these three riders, we don't have level seven detection on them. It's not locked in, but it's not gonna change a whole lot. These riders are gonna be a lot better. Even though we don't know for sure where these two are at, and we do know where this one is at, these two may be better, may not. They might have a similar potential, but you, you can believe with certainty that they will be better than these riders. So don't focus on them. The only reason why I am focused on this one is because they're from Namibia and uh, has something to do with the series that I'm doing. I can only sign one writer per nation, but that's not a rule within the game itself. So focus on getting to level seven on the higher potential writers once they've gotten to level five. Focus on getting those 17, 18 year olds and not the youngest ones. See, this is actually as a 16 year old, it really doesn't matter. I can cancel that. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this scouting tutorial. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.